the normally reclusive Woody Allen has been speaking out again. Again. Maybe some details later. Just check with the lawyers. British kids are filling themselves up with sweet, fatty foods containing almost no vitamins and minerals, in a report warns today. Uh, they eat little fruit and vegetables, laying the foundations for ill health in adulthood. And the latest uh, London crime figures, let's just have a look here, show that the capital is heading for a record million offences again this, this year. It's 5.11 now, and right now, here's Alan Rob with details of tonight's News 92. Alan. Steve, the Queen has offered to pay income tax. She's also volunteering to pick up the costs of most of the civil list. Prince Charles is also saying he'll pay tax. At the moment he does on a voluntary basis, but he'll put that onto a formal footing. Details on that announcement and a special report on the future of the royal family tonight. The BBC sets out its vision of its own future today on Radio 1 FM. Remains committed to music. There will be more speech, though. On TV, much less imported soaps and game shows. Neighbours fans have been warned. Mm -mm. Also, the government announces details on levels of the new council tax, which comes into effect, of course, next year. That of special interest to the Queen now. She'll have to pay the council tax? She'll have tax? to pay the council tax no. on her private properties at Sandringham really? and Balmoral. Briggs starts to bring it home when you realise wow. what's involved in all this. <laughs> yeah. Um, we'll have the latest on Desert Orchids' fight for life, why Watford Football Club are upset by their club's fanzine magazine. And we'll also visit the Christmas cracker factory in Wales that's been snowed under by offers after it appealed for new jokes for its crackers. Oh, yeah, they had no jokes. Yeah, no, go was on. great, because everyone, all the material has just <laughs> run out. We all know how bad the jokes are that you get in Christmas crackers. Judge whether some of the... Well, at least here's one of them, anyway. Whether uh, any no, you're better. not going to do I'm one, I'm going to do you? one. Uh, Only uh, one. Hang on, do you want me to get a laugh cart lined up? Well, you me? probably need it, okay, yes. Here we go. Okay, here Go now, on. What did, Nelson, what did Nelson say to his men before... I should have put the hat on first. <laughs> Just get on with it. What did Nelson say to his men before they got on the boat? I don't know, Alan. Get on the boat. <laughs> <laughs> you see, it went down very well after all. <laughs> Are you sure you've got your credibility left to do the show tonight? Absolutely not. It's all gone, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, it's all on tonight on 1FM at 6.30. 6.30. If you haven't seen the female condom, Femidom, I'm a little too embarrassed to describe it myself, so I will need the aid of a late day. And I may do it with Sybil or Nikki tomorrow, OK? <laughs> Unless you want to come in, Rachel, and do it. No, all right. I can see clearly now. There's Johnny Nash, 1FM at 519. In the Oxford Mail here, alarm worry for pensioner. A pensioner was talked into buying a £1,300 burglar alarm for her caravan, and today police wrapped the questionable sales tactics of the firm. In the Evening Mail in Birmingham, Metro Night Shift is axed, is their headline here. Rover plans to slash production at Longbridge in the new year by scrapping the Metro Night Shift. In the Yorkshire Evening Post, Homes Boost is their headline. A massive £25 million kickstart for the West Yorkshire housing market was announced today. It's good news. 520. Okay, here's a Stevie Wonder song on one. <laughs> as ever. So, Saturday night is the favourite night for people, it says here. That's, I mean, I don't know what this means. I guess it means that Saturday is their favourite day. Also, Sunday morning. These are people's favourite times of day. So, it's Saturday night and Sunday morning. And uh, I don't really know. What's my favourite day? I quite like uh, Mondays, actually. I quite oh, like... no. No, no I, I do. Mondays. No, I do because I think nobody's going to be on the case today, so I'll be on the case. <laughs> I do. No, I do. fail quite badly. Yeah, I always fail every week, but I always think I'm really going to challenge Monday. It's going to be different. Yeah. Uh, Wednesday, I hate. I don't like Wednesday. What day are we on today? Thursday. Thursday. Mm. No. Uh, that's all right. It's okay. Fridays, I love.
because it's lo looking forward to the weekend. But yeah, Friday nights are the best night for me because I know I've got two massive lions because it'd be the Saturday morning <laughs> lion and the Sunday morning. Sleep's very important to you, Nikki. Isn't it? Uh, yeah, sleep is my favourite. How part. many hours? Nine hours for you, isn't it? Or something? Well, I like. I'd love to have about twelve hours. Twelve. <laughs> but during the week, I don't get. I get about six and a half, which isn't very good. No. But my favourite day is Saturday. Yeah. Saturday night as well because you can go to cinema, go out for a meal, and still have a lion the next oh, day. Yeah. That's what it says here. What do you actually do on your Saturday night? Is that what you do? You, yeah, you go, go to the cinema. Meal. Yeah, go around the shop. Every Saturday? Well, no, no. <laughs> I haven't got that much money. Oh, yeah. How many but films no, are there? That would be my best Saturday. Yeah. But if I could go to see the, you know, a film that's on and then go for a lovely meal and then go and have a lion for Sunday morning. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Lazy, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Museums, I like. Going around museums. Oh, I'm yeah. boring, aren't I? Really? They're not open Saturday nights, are no, they? No, not Saturday <laughs> nights. No, there. I was talking Sunday mornings. Oh, right. Yeah, museums and stuff. When I was younger, we used to have this routine, a whole crowd of friends of mine. Hello, Ga hello the Garys. Hello, Alan. Uh, we used to, and uh, Nick. We Hi, Gary. To, uh, Alan, there, there was always one bloke, isn't there, in a group of uh, blokes and girls, or whatever, or uh, one girl who's got a car. Yeah. There, and everybody piles into that person's car, which really <laughs> hacks them off, as we say, because they can't drink very much, obviously, when they get to the pub. And yeah. everybody piles in the car, and we used to <laughs> disappear into Kent and find a little pub somewhere in the Kent. The men of Kent. Yeah, and have a nice drink up. It used to be really good fun, that. <laughs> and there was always somebody who had to ride dog in the car. Oh, yes. Because it was a hatchback. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody yeah. had to Crouching ride dog. Oh, yeah, like, I've done that. Gary, I'm not riding dog again. No, <laughs> it's not my turn. <laughs> there was always arguments about what that. What is your ideal Saturday night? Maybe as a teen. As a teenager, we used to, after rugby on in winter, we used to meet in the same pub every week. It was called the Stratton Hotel in Nottingham. Oh, I know that. You don't. Yes, I do. Have you stayed there? <laughs> yes, I I have. Well, when it was, it was fairly new at that time. It, well, it was new when I stayed there. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't this going. rugby team, were you? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but uh, uh, the usual kind of debauchery went on, drinking and so oh, forth. And, but, but on the way home, the routine was to get as much in the way of chips and battered stuff down your throat <laughs> as possible. <laughs> I mean, lashings of stuff. Anything Real that, blow up. And uh, one particular chip shot it was very adventurous. You'd get things like battered mushrooms, you know, oh, way before wow. anybody else, and, and onion rings and, and <laughs> pineapple rings. And it was calories oh. and cholesterol oh. in neck. That was my Saturday routine. Lovely, Nick. That sounds great. <laughs> what about Chinese food? Nobody's mentioned Chinese food because Saturday is a real Chinese food Oh, yeah, food you used night. to do that sometimes on the way home from the pub. Oh, nice absolutely. Yeah. You used to fall out like on... Uh, oh, show. Yeah. And if you're really lucky, it was in your lap while you were holding it. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Like on Who Dares Wins yeah. used to be coming out the bottom of the bag. <laughs> well, every Saturday night, come 11.30, the kebab shops are full, the pizza shops are full. It's just a, it's a ritual. It is a ritual, really? yeah. When I was about 12, and this is a real trouble when you're about 12 because you're you're not old enough to really have a lot of money and you're too young to stay at home and watch uh, Summerside Special or something or whatever it was. <laughs> Summerside Special. Well, you're never too young for Summerside Special. <laughs> and, uh, what we used to do, I don't know if anybody else used to do this, was uh, just go around a friend's house and for about three hours between seven, get round there, hello Tina, get round there and then just sit in somebody's bedroom and put on you know, like the Yazoo album and just sit there and talk about Yazoo and the Human League for, yeah. for about three hours and say, oh, did you see Phil Oakey the other day on, on Top of the Pop? wasn't he great Sad. and that was it that was a night and that was a great night and I look back on those <laughs> nights and I think what happened to those nights why can't I do that now why do I have to go out to the pub why do I have to yeah. end up in these used to do that. kebab shops why can't I just <laughs> sit in with the Yazoo album you and me both have a cup of coffee at have the end of the of night coffee. mum would come up with milk and biscuits that's right oh, and yes. you, what you turn off turn off the lights as well and sit there and listen to Yazoo in the human league and, and discuss the merits of uh, midnight and stuff like that <laughs> Well, there we are. <laughs> do you do that as a child? Yes, um, yes I did. Yeah, yes, and I think good. we proved this survey right. Thank you, Posse. Bless you. More later. That's quite heartwarming, that. have been warned that nurses will no longer accept menial tasks that can be done by others. Well, U.S. troops have now left the Philippines for good and Bill Clinton is announcing the rest of his economic team. Now, me and Richard and Sid, the manager, and Arnie and Easy Life do two gigs this weekend. Friday night, tomorrow, Newcastle under Lyme, Saturday, Preston. That's tomorrow, Newcastle under Lyme, and Saturday, Preston. Do come on down. We've got pictures of Pam. <laughs> 
and free money and software and hardware computer games cds and big prizes that's tomorrow newcastle under lime saturday preston coming back in our next half hour segment with the posse and the showbiz and the traffic and marky and much more hey you keep it right there please will return. Good evening, Northern Europe and the UK. 6.30 Europe, 5.30 the UK. The news on the network. Here comes Brian Deacon on one. The Queen and Prince Charles have offered to give up their immunity from income tax. The Prime Minister told the Commons the Queen is also ready to change the whole system of financing the royals. I... An independent inquiry is to be held into the fatal shooting of an IRA man in Belfast last night. He was unarmed and apparently running away from police. President de Klerk of South Africa says the country should hold a general election in which all races can vote by April 1994 at the latest. The ANC wanted an earlier vote. Parents have been told not to worry about warnings of computer games triggering epileptic fits. The reassuring advice comes from specialists. 1FM's Josh Hales reports. It's two of the big players in the computer games market, Nintendo and Sega, who've issued warnings that their video products could trigger fits. It's because some people are photosensitive and can be affected by flickering lights. But the British Epilepsy Association says very few people are at risk, and they've only ever come across one case of a teenager having a fit caused by a video game. A leading brain specialist says the alarm was raised by American experts going over the top. That's 1FM News, News 92. Sybil and Alan, that's at half six. Thank you.